Hi folks, so just come in from a walk with Kai. The weather's absolutely beautiful out there, so we've spent a few out a few hours outdoors because the weather has been really awful just lately and yeah, I thought we'd take advantage of it. Um, probably got flickering light again because of that palm tree outside, but I hope it's not too distracting. And it is the day before the longest night. So we've just got to grab the light where we can, haven't we? <laughs> anyway, we've come back and the postman's been and it looks like a total tarot magazines are here. A little late, um, to be fair. I know a lot of people are a bit upset about that, but, you know, postal strikes, there's not much we can do really. Um, Sympathise with them. And it looks like the fairy tarot. Yeah. And let me just open the pack it because it will rattle. I mean that packaging is pretty flimsy but still it um, does the job doesn't it? I haven't really had a problem with anything being bent or out of shape. So we've got the next two cards in our Art Nouveau large tarot which are the two sixes, the six of swords, the six of pentacles. So we've got the bling. So let's just put those to one side. They're very pretty, aren't they? Yeah, anyway. And we have our fairy tarot, which I'm really excited about, and I'll tell you for why. I've wanted this deck for quite some time, and I only managed to get the mini version, which I've had for quite some time. Um, it's the same deck, but really, really tiny. If I show you in comparison, let's take take the title card just as a comparison, and then I might have if I took this out of the packaging. Actually, I like about the way they've packaged these is you've got like a little lift up tab here, and you just go <laughs> like that. No damage to the cards, which is brilliant. Okay, so we've got the box there and the magazine. So I'm just going to put those to one side and show you, if you're interested, the difference between these two decks. Oh, seagulls are going again. Uh, the backs are different. Yeah, the backs are different and a massive difference in the card size. So if we go to, let's have a look, they're exactly the same images. So if we take the full, which in this deck is the elf, then we've got one heck of a difference in size. And the other difference is we've got the elf and the different languages written around the side of this mini deck. Whereas here it looks like we've just got the numbers, not not the names. The, the little one comes with a tiny little white book in the, all the languages. So you get eight pages by the looks of it. Not a lot of information. Um, the magician or the elf, initiative, presence of mind, willpower, the high priestess, study, knowledge, austerity, mysteries. So not an awful loss for the majors. And then <laughs> the way they've done the minors, so chalices as hearts, ace, abundance and love. Yeah, so all the way through. And then knave, messenger, knight, seducer. Queen, wife, and king, patron. <laughs> what interesting, isn't it, the way they've uh, interpreted those. So, as I say, the cards are exactly the same. Exactly the same picture. But larger, and that really helps me. <laughs> so I have really been looking forward to receiving this deck. Okay. Should we go through it? Let's go through it. So I'll put some music on and just do a little walk through.
Okay, so that's the deck. <clears throat> you might have noticed a few differences. So with the suits, get to the suits, they've been renamed. So the suit of Val's are pentacles. And we have a bunny rabbit. And then we have, obviously, with a heart on it, we're going to say that's cups, aren't we? So we can recognise that as cups, which they've called chalices. And we've got a cute little bar lamb for that one. The suit of leaves are swords. So that's the sword suit. And then finally, the suit of acorns are ones. So a little bit of a learning curve there. Each of the aces has a little inscription on it, as you can see, which looks to be Latin. I'm just going to look at the guidebook and let see if it actually says anything about this, which it doesn't. Um, in the little white book, there's no indication of what these actually say on the aces. I wonder if it does in the magazine. Should we have a little look at the magazines? The deck sort of reminds me of um, a little bit Oak, Ash and Thorn, a little bit, you know, Stephanie Burrows, a little bit um, Terry Pratchett, <laughs> a little bit Victorian fairy tale books, you know, from the Victorian era. It's got all those sort of vibes, I think. And a little bit... Just a touch, Brian Fried. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> anyway, let's have a little look at these magazines that we've got with this, these issues. So part 24, part 25. In part 24, we get the major arcana cards for the fairy tarot, and then the minor arcana cards come in part 25. So you get the complete collection. So what have we got on the front? Two images from the fairy tarot very large images which is great so this is temperance by the looks of things with the rainbows oh beautiful and the queen of wands so let's look at the first one page uh, part 24 let's see what we've got in the magazine unmatched illustrations the tarot of the elves queen of wands differs from the radiant wise spirit one so this is the Tarot of the Elves, which we haven't got yet. And the, the deck we are learning with, if you are following along this um, series as a course, then the Radiant Wise Tarot is the learning deck. So if we go back to the Queen of Wands as an example, then quite clearly the one in the deck that we've got in this issue, the Fairy Tarot, is a lot, lot different to both of these. <laughs> Absolutely different. Okay, so what have we got next? So there's more examples of the differences here. So one of the most obvious ones is the difference 
in different system. What they have done is they've used the Marseille deck as an illustration because it's a different system. Um, they've got the Pre-Raphaelite Tarot and is it the Arcana, I think. Yeah. So again, three different magi magicians from three different decks, but all magicians. So yes. Um, so the designer has probably reasons, well I would assume has reasons, behind why they've chosen what they've chosen to depict as that card. <clears throat> so it's always a good idea to actually have a look at their, uh, you know, if they've got a website or if a book that goes with it, with a little white book or whatever, the reasons behind their choice of illustration always helpful and it adds extra layers to the meaning it might be something you know you might look here at the radiant wise and go you don't get that i don't understand because it's such a an old style if you like um, depictions yeah i think 1909 was when she when the rider wait smith deck was first published so there's a long time ago so obviously you know we look at the world in a different way now where this would have spoken maybe to people of the you know the early 1900s they would have understood because they were very into medieval stories and so this would probably mean more to them than it does to a modern audience and so modern decks really speak to that so anyway we have this one in detail so symbol symbology and what it means then it's the same format as it normally is so with the personal life with the divination and with your psyche and so on so different ways of interpreting then we've got examples from other decks so we have the worth Angels, Tower of the Angels, Klimt. Oh, I can't wait for that Klimt deck. Uh, the Shaman Tarot. That Pre-Raphaelite one that we already have. The Universal Celtic, which we already have. We've got Tarot of the Dark Grimoire. We haven't got that one. Neferati's Tarot. The Fey Tarot. Tarot Illuminati we have got. And then the Pagan Tarot, so maybe they're coming in future issues. Here we've got a spread. This is called Fairy Eyes. So each position of the spread relates to a part of the body. Hmm. Tells you the structure of the spread. And this, there's a summary there. Then we've got an example reading using that spread and what the different positions and cards would mean in that position. And then bringing it all together. The deck library, the fairy tarot. So this is going to tell you the background to the fairy tarot. And then we have a description of each major arcana. And they, this is where they've actually put those different, those different titles. They're in the book, whereas like here they are on the mini version. They're actually on the cards themselves. So you've got the elf, the magician, the high priestess, the empress, the emperor, the hierophant, the lovers, the chariot. It differs here, the dryad, which is justice. And noticeably, that would be the strength card in the Rider Waite system. Uh, Rider Waite Smith system, or, or the study deck that we've got. But here they've swapped it, so strength was now at 11 and justice is at 8. So that's like the Thoth system. So dry that. Hermit is a different one. So card 10 instead of the Wheel of Fortune, we've got the Orid. Orid? Hmm. Don't know. Strength, Hangman, Death. Instead of Temperance, we've got the Sylph. So instead of the Devil, see this, we've got the Troll. And then we have the tower. Okay, we st <laughs> there's a few different cards, isn't there? So card 17, which is normally the star, is now the Nayad. Can't even say how that's pronounced. 
that's our star and we've got the moon the sun judgment and then instead of the world card we've got the globe so there's a few changes in the deck not only with the minor arcana suit names but also with some of the major arcana cards okay so storytelling cards yeah, they're very much storytelling aren't they you could actually just take a card and make a story from it i think anyways they're beautiful cards it says here arranged in order they actually do create a story with their images a story in which the querent should be able to see their own problems and possible solutions play out it's interesting i'm just wondering if they actually say what these mean on the banners let's have a little look nope i can't see anything that actually talks about those so might be worth googling those maybe so we've got a visual reference to the major arcana here and then tips on how to use this magazine and then the back is a preview of what's coming so let's have a look at the next issue which is 25 so we have the minor arcana cast with this issue Okay, reading the tarot to the suits too. Yeah, we had, what did we have last time? The, the cups and the pentacles. And this time we've got the wands and the swords. It tells you their elements, roles and keywords. Yeah, that's interesting. I love the illustrations in these magazines. They're so, you know, they pop, they're great. Uh, card in details are Three of Cups, the symbols, the meanings in your personal life with divination, psyche and soul. Exactly the same, what the card shows us. So, reading the imagery. Different examples. Got the Klimt again. Tower of the Angels. That will all again, that with parts 34 and 35. The Worth. What else do we have here? We've got Los Carabello Tarot. The Shaman Tarot, Tarot of the White Cats, which we are getting in parts 30 and 31. The Pagan Tarot, Tarot Draconis, ooh, parts 32 and 33. Oh, that'll be good. There's a little dragon down there. And then there's Tarot of the Dark Grimoire, the Fey Tarot, and the Before Tarot. That's coming with parts 28 and 29. Interesting. On this correlation here, we've got Sephiroth's. So they're actually going into the Tree of Life there a little bit. I wonder how deep we'll go with that. Law of Three. Okay. Okay. This is a deck I've actually got. That's the Silver Witch Tarot. So that makes sense, the law of three, because it's a threefold law. I've got a spell jar, maybe. And some crystals. Some more spell jars. And we've even got what looks like a grimoire. So they're getting into the witchy side of things here with this spread. And... Okay, so an example reading of that spread using the cards and selling, telling you what they would mean in those positions are the same and then bringing it all together, bringing the reading together. We are going to get that Silver Witchcraft Tarot coming up. Okay, so, oh, okay, Esoter Esoterica Tarot, so this is the fourth instalment, so where are we going with this? Sacred Geometry, Divine Architecture, yeah, Sacred Geometry, which is very much a thing in the Thoth deck. Tarot Techniques Using Age. You can read the age of any character in the cards, okay? Baby, old man, old man, mm, I suppose. That's a way of doing it. Although how you would do it in the Fairy Tarot might be a little bit challenging possibly anyway so here we have the tips on using this magazine to further your 
knowledge. When you look at the cards in overview, it's really quite interesting, isn't it? Because you can actually see the colour palettes. So here for the leaves, they're very green backgrounds as well as the leaves themselves. Here they sort of like a, a sandy colour maybe. The hearts are very prominent. The reds and the pinks. And then with the acorns, they're sort of like a um, muted brown, fawny colour. So it's interesting to see them all laid out like that. I, I think this is a really nice feature of the magazine, actually. And I appreciate it very much because to do this yourself, you're going to need quite a big table. <laughs> Unless, of course, you have the mini. But even the mini, look, you couldn't do it that sort of size, could you? That's it. You'd double that, actually. Anyway... I do go off on little tangents, sorry. <laughs> so what we come... Oh, okay, so next we're going to get the Egyptian Tarot, Major Arcana and Minor Arcana. Hopefully that won't be too long away, actually, because this one is very late, as I said. Um, so hopefully the next one will come a bit quicker. To be absolutely honest with you, I had this deck, Tarot, the Egyptian Tarot here, years and years and years ago, and I gave it away. I didn't connect to it, so it's going to be really interesting for me personally to see how I get along with it, using it with this, you know, this magazine system. I might have a different experience with it, and also, of course, years have gone by, and hopefully my knowledge has grown as well. Um, so it might make a difference. So that's going to be quite interesting to to discover, really. But anyway, that's the little walk through and discussion on the latest total tarot magazines i hope you enjoyed that my little mini deck <laughs> i'm so happy that i've got a full size one though because it makes such a difference to be able to see the card you know such a difference it's really going to help so until the next time, which will be the next part of my deacon journey and the Ten of Wands, which I'm filming hopefully tomorrow. I'll get up as soon as I can. I've done a lot of study with that. And so I'll share with you what I've discovered. And it's going to be a personal one again, I think, because again, it's one of my Earth cards, the Eight, Nine and Ten of Wands those deacons are to do with my birth chart so yeah I'm looking forward to sharing that actually I don't know if it's of use to anybody else but I'm finding it absolutely fascinating and it's really developed I feel like I'm really developing quite fast my knowledge and of the thoth basically because the thoth has always been a little bit of a challenging deck for me as it is for a lot of people I think um, and so it's really, really helping to helping me to cement that system into my <laughs> whole brain. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, until then, have a great day and I hope the weather holds. And yeah, have a brilliant Yule. OK, thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye.